What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American Politics, back at the new video, and today, it is time to do a post-mortem video on the Wyoming slash somewhat of the Alaska primary elections that happened yesterday. And boy, oh boy, was it glorious what happened in Wyoming. Folks, the Cheney dynasty is finally dead. It's over. Now, before I forget, of course, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit the little bell, and yes, of course, go follow the mysterious Twitter account in the description down below, and uh, yeah, also join the channel, that is right, folks, for just 10 cents a day, you could join Real American Politics, I think it's worth it, I recommend people join today, and also for $5 a month, you can join Real American Politics and get a shout out at the end of each video. I recommend you do it, and yes. All right, let's get into it, folks. This should be a quick video because the freaking Alaska. We'll get to that in a minute. But let us start in what was the W of the night, possibly the year. Liz Cheney got stomped last night by Harriet Hagman. Um, I don't have to say anything, and you already could tell, this wasn't even close. An incumbent representative got beat by almost 40 points. 40! Think about that for a second. An incumbent representative loses by over 40. In an election where she got 10,000 Democrats, we know of at least, to vote in the Republican primary for her. So, when you take out those 10,000 Democrats... This was potentially one of the biggest landslides against an incumbent representative in a primary, potentially ever. I mean, you look at the Democrat vote share, only 7,000 votes for the Democrat primary. And you look at where Liz Cheney did best, and it was Tennant County and Albany County. Two counties, Biden won, Ted and a bit more. Albany's kind of a swing county. But the point is, Tennant County is a county worth. A lot of Democrats. It's been a Democrat stronghold since 2000. And the point is, this county usually gets around 4,000 Republican votes. This primary got over 8,000 votes just in this one county. Over 8,000. You see why Liz Cheney's margin of defeat is significantly worse than this on paper. She got so many votes from Democrats, yet lost by 40. This was an embarrassment. And you look at where Harriet Hagman did best. And of course, Natruna, uh, Natrana, Natrana? Yes. Washiki, Bighorn, Johnson, etc. She did best in the entirety of Wyoming, Laramie County. And we can already call this race when Converse, I think, came in. It was early vote, and Hagman was obliterating Liz Cheney. In early vote. So this potentially is the... I gotta say the fastest election call for a primary, for a competitive primary, potentially ever. We called it in 10 minutes. Alright? We called it in like 10 minutes. This was a complete slapdown. And that's about it for Wyoming. Yes, there was the governor race, which... Who cares? Mark Gordon sucks, but he only got 62%. That's kind of a, that's kind of bad for an incumbent governor, especially in a state like Wyoming. Now, also we had Secretary of State Chuck Gray, the Giga Chad, also won by quite a bit, by nine points. It's a good victory, a lot of victories in the state of Wyoming. We turned in one night the Wyoming House delegation in multiple statewide races into a neocon party from a neocon, you know, establishment party to an America First based party. Because people need to understand, Harriet Hagman has a, t a serious shot of becoming one of the best representatives in the United States House. And it's a good sign for Republicans for turnout. I mean, seriously, Democrats only got 7,000 votes. I know this is Wyoming, but come on! Try a little bit harder. So yeah, Great turnout for Republicans, over 170,000 votes. That may be the most of any House race we've seen this cycle. Yes, 10,000 came from Democrats, but 
whoopty freaking dude. Remember, this is a close primary state, so that's even a bit more impressive. I mean, this is 60,000 votes more than what we saw in 2018. So overall, it was a phenomenal night for the America First movement in Wyoming. Multiple statewide races won, multiple state legislator races won. It was a great night overall. Now we got to get to the race that everybody's talking about, Alaska. You know, when I see a bad election system, I call it out. But this election system in Alaska takes the cake for potentially being the worst possible system in the country. This is absurdly stupid. Whoever designed this system purposely did it just so the establishment can win races. This this ranked choice voting nonsense, we'll get to that in a little bit, is bad enough. But this open primary nonsense where you could potentially get two Republican candidates in there, a Democrat candidate, a nonpartisan candidate. What the fuck is this? Why is this a serious solution? The top four move on to the general? What? It's such a stupid system. Now again, people need to understand with Alaska primaries, they don't matter. Alaska elections never correlate at all with primaries. They don't. Yes, this is a new system, but we have decades worth of history to prove it doesn't matter. These primaries don't really matter because they never correlate to the general election. Now, the Senate race. I'm going to ignore this. I'm going to completely ignore this for now because we still got a lot of vote outstanding. From what I heard, it's a lot of election day vote in rural Alaska. Now, Alaska politics is strange because that doesn't necessarily mean it's Republican because there's a lot of, you know, Alaska natives that live in northern Alaska. Those could potentially be favorable to someone like Murkowski. But the point is, I'm not going to discuss this race because there's still a lot of vote outstanding. We got to see what happens. But this race here, the special election, I'm also ignoring the other house race, the special election, this is a total joke. A complete clown show, a complete mockery of the election system. So, as everybody knows, it's a ranked choice vote system for the general election. This is a special election, so this is ranked choice voting. But, we're not going to know till September 1st who actually won this race. September 1st. Think about that. That's... Th what is that, two weeks? We're not going to even know who wins in two weeks. They're just not going to count the votes. Because Alaska has a stupid system of elections. Yes, I know it's hard because, you know, you got a lot of rural voters in northern Alaska. It takes forever for votes to come in. But make them vote earlier. Like, seriously, why should we wait on, like, a thousand votes or so? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's a stupid system. And on paper, this looks good for Republicans, that Palin is going to be the second candidate. That's happening, all right? The remaining vote is rural vote. Again, it could benefit Potola? Potola, yeah. Because there are some Democrat rural counties or precincts, whatever you call it in Alaska. They have a, such a stupid system. But the point is, this should look good on paper for Republicans. 60% of the vote, over went towards the Republicans in the special election. The problem? A lot of these Nick Bigich votes, I think that's how you say his last name, there's a chunk of them that are going to vote for the Democrat. And also, there's a chunk of that vote, of the Bigich vote, that did put Sarah Plan as her second candidate, did put anybody. So their votes are gone. So the remaining vote it would go to Palin. But it's a matter of how much. If a vast majority of Bigich votes goes to Palin, she's winning this race. But if it's like only 50% or something like that, and like 30% goes to Patola and the rest are like blank, Palin's in trouble. And this is my issue with this system. You're telling me over 60% of voters voted for a Republican candidate, yet a Democrat could potentially win this race. Because some of these voters didn't put a second option. They didn't understand it. How is this a fair system? 
I'm making a full rant on the ala- of the ranked choice voting as a whole because this is such a stupid system. I mean, whoever designed this need to realize it's a waste of time. And the only way I would agree with primary or special elections, or I should say ranked choice voting, is via primaries or for special elections, all right? For primaries of special elections. Maybe I'll consider it. I'll make a whole video on it because this is stupid. This is absurd, and there's no reason the system should exist. So that's kind of it for the Alaska races. It's still very early. It's a stupid system, and we won't know for a couple weeks. Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this quick postmortem of the Wyoming slash Alaska race. If you did, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit the little bell, and yes, of course, go follow the mysterious Twitter account in the description down below. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Godspeed to all of you.